in 2019, right before the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Michael Bay directed a movie for Netflix, some action movie. And this is his first return to, you know, Hollywood big budget filmmaking since 2017's Transformers The Last Night, which is uh, a really bad movie. And I actually like the Transformers films, um, the first three in particular. I think the last two are pretty bad. Um, so yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually a huge Michael Bay fan. I think he's done some, definitely some garbage. And he's done some movies that I, I truly just adore, even though I know the quality of them overall is a little bit suspect. So let's talk about Michael Bay's latest, Ambulance. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Before we get started, click on that red subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you know every time I post a new piece of content. Okay, so Michael Bay, my history with the guy. Uh, the Rock is his best film. I actually don't think it's all that close. I I know people kind of love to dunk Armageddon, but I actually adore that movie, and I won't apologize for it either. Uh, I like Pain and Gain, which is kind of a drama thriller that he did um, in the 2010s, and I think it's I think it's really good as well. It's very different than his traditional stuff, even though it has that same kind of visual flair and style. He did the Benghazi movie, the Benghazi movie, 13 Hours, which I admit I haven't seen. I did Pearl Harbor. Um, he did Bad Boys, Bad Boys 2. And then he did five Transformers movies. I, I like Transformers. I like Revenge of the Fallen. And I like um, Dark of the Moon. I think that Age of Extinction is awful and the worst of all of those. And then I think The Last Night is really bad. Um, not as bad as the fourth one, but still really, really very bad overall, um, especially compared to the other three films. So, um, this movie feels like old school Michael Bay. And if you thought that he was going to change his directing style or tone things down in the very least, uh, you would be sorely mistaken because Ambulance is one of those like movies where everything is just cranked up to the maximum. It's, it's like insanely hard to tell what's going on sometimes because it's just like complete overload and way too much is happening. And it's, it's as a movie, it's fine. I don't think it's great. I don't even think it's good. It's just kind of there. And it's a little disappointing because it's got two actors that I really, really enjoy watching in Jake Gyllenhaal, who he, like, if I was to act alongside somebody my own age-ish, uh, Jake G would be the guy. Like, he seems super cool. He seems like one of those actors who really just puts everything into his into his craft and into his films. And that's the case here. Um, I think the movie just has tons of problems with the script and the story. And it, his, 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 his giving it his all just doesn't, it, it's not, it doesn't help. It doesn't, it doesn't work, even though he gives it his everything. Uh, the other one is Yahya Abdul-Mateen, who is probably most well-known as playing... Uh, Black Manus in the first Aquaman film, and he gives it his all as well, but the movie just doesn't, it, it's just a Michael Bay movie, but it doesn't have any of the heart and soul that the other films that I like uh, have. And that's a bummer, because the movie seems to think that it has that heart and soul, but the execution just says otherwise. Um, and it's, it's a bummer because I'm a big Michael Bay guy. I think The Rock, um, I, I look at that movie as like the perfect Michael Bay movie. It's got great performances from Sean Connery, Michael Bay, and Ed Harris, Nick Cage, obviously. And uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I adore that movie. I love the heart and soul behind Armageddon, despite it having its own script issues and plausibility issues. Um, and really ambulance is just like, it's this, it's a story about a guy who, um, is trying to like, you know, pay his wife's medical bills and it makes, you know, a statement about how we treat our veterans and that stuff is all fine and true. Um, and then he teams up with Jake Gyllenhaal's character, Danny, and they basically rob a bank, which goes wrong. And they end up taking hostages in an ambulance and none of it makes any friggin' sense. Like from a from a plausibility standpoint, uh, characters make dumb decision after dumb decision after dumb decision. Even the cops who are supposed to be like the smart guys, they really uh, don't make the right decisions either. 
And then the movie makes a really interesting choice at the end that I talk I want to talk about a little bit. And that it you have these two main characters, right? The two protagonists of the film. And it makes they both make questionable decisions. And I'm not going to spoil the ending of the movie because I don't think that's fair. Because if you like these type of movies, if you're a Michael Bay stan, if you love the guy like I do, you should probably watch this. Um, just so you can say you did. But the movie then takes these two characters, these protagonists, and it makes a moral statement about one. And then it makes a moral statement about the other, like at the exact same time. And yet those decisions that it makes um, just seem like they're pulled out of the ass of the writers. The, the, the actions of the characters un, undo that decision that they ultimately make at the end. They both make their decisions and the film passes judgment on them, but it doesn't line up with how they have behaved through the remainder of the film for the or for the beginning of the film the the entire rest of the film for the most part um and that's tough you know because you you can't have your characters undone by their actions in the rest of the film and have me take it seriously so i know that's a very vague statement and it doesn't really offer much in the way of closure or actually saying all that much about the movie but uh it to me it was jarring to me to see characters make decisions and to see the movie movie pass judgment on those decisions in a way that just felt completely out of character with the rest of the film and out of place um, when compared to the rest of the movie. Uh, that said, the action, it is... The cinematography and stuff, it looks great. Uh, it's got all of his trademark camera swoops and and cars flipping over things and the explosions and all the very Michael Bay stuff is is there and it's in place and it's just a, it felt like a little bit too much even for me like this movie is exhausting it's 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 hard to watch at times because there's just so much going on at once that it's hard to keep track of everything so i Man, I got I got such mixed feelings about this one because I love Michael Bay, um, but this this movie just I I don't think this is the one. I think I think he has tremendous talent as a director and clearly a lot of passion and energy for what he does that comes through in the way his films are shot. Uh, you can tell they're kind of a reflection of his chaotic personality, and that works on occasion. And on this occasion, it simply doesn't. So. Uh, I was disappointed in Ambulance. I had high expectations. It had kind of, you know, middling reviews from the critics, but that I, I don't care about any of that. Their opinions don't mean anything to me, to me anyway. Um, and here, it's just, this isn't one of his better films. And I, I know he still has it in him. I know he's capable um, because I've seen him do great movies uh, that I really love. And this just ain't one of them. So uh, if you're a Michael Bay guy, I guess check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to get feedback on this. Where would you rank among all the Michael Bay films? Uh, so let me know. And I'll see you next Wednesday at 9 a.m.